Welcome back to another uh, Unreal stream. <laughs> Already forgot. <laughs> so today, give me a minute to share the link. This music slaps. So good. All right. Everything good on this end. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Cool. Hey, toxic produce. I wouldn't want to eat the toxic produce. Lewd. Hey, Mr. Nibbles. I don't know why you even commented that, but okay. Hey, why take down? Welcome, welcome back. Or, hello, new people. <laughs> hello, Invention Gaming. That's a nice name. So, as usual, we're just working on a parkour system in Unreal Engine 5. Mostly to learn the engine, but also maybe make a game out of it. Also, let me know if my audio levels are fine. And if everything looks good here, just trying to center the video a little more. Oh, well, I think it's fine, right? No. A little like that. Okay. <laughs> I want it to be centered a little. Uh, okay. Okay. This microphone is kind of old. Alright, so working on a parkour system and hopefully you can make a game out of it, um, but mostly to learn. So we can crouch, we can slide, if there's a lot of bugs, it's a work in progress. We can vault, so last time we worked on the vaulting, so if you press spacebar within a certain threshold, if you're in front of the vault, it will vault. So like if I press space here, it'll wait until you're in front of it to actually vault it. So it kind of gives you a little more leeway. Because um, it's kind of hard to time it. Exactly. Hi Ilba Ilba. Welcome back. That's good. Thanks, Mr. Nibbles. Sorry, a little allergies today. Um, yeah. And so you're working on that. You can only vault over something if it's short enough. Thickness. Oh, well, I guess I can vault over that. <laughs> that meets the threshold. And we can wall run. And that looked pretty smooth. There is a weird thing that happens when we wall run, though. And I don't know what are the conditions for getting met. <laughs> and we can also kind of wall run horizontally. Hi Dante. See, but it, it's messed up. Like, it's not working. Whee! Alright. <laughs> I have a Trello for this. We have to make sure to keep our progress tracked so we don't lose track of our goals. If you don't use Trello or a project management of any sort, I recommend it because it's really useful. Um, so we did all this and this is what we're currently doing and this is what we're doing next. <laughs> Quick, give him a high five. No, well, I can't get in the game. <laughs> Hi, Thai stream, T-I stream, I don't know, it's Thai stream. Welcome. If you're new, then I'm old. <laughs> so. I got a lot of dad jokes. <laughs> not not good jokes. Um. So, I think we were continuing on the vaulting. There's a couple things here. Um. 
Pizza or burger? Mm, well, I can't eat cheese, so burger. Well, I guess I can eat vegan pizza. <laughs> Hi, Neo. I'm Mr. Nibbles. Hi, Skippin. Hi, Ashif. Also, I'm very sorry if I pronounce names wrong. I'm... You know, YouTube should put, like, an extra thing when you hover over someone's name that someone can put the pronunciation syllables just to make life easy. <laughs> it's a small thing, but it'd go a long way. So, one thing here, keep momentum after animation has finished playing. Bro, I think that's when we do the vaulting. You see, it kind of stops. It, like, stops the velocity of the player, which is a high-speed game, right? If we're successfully vaulting over, we don't want to be slower than if we didn't vault over because we want to kind of reward the player for vaulting correctly. And that and do a speed boost if they do vault correctly and this one more was like if you're going slower um to just do it slower you know if you're running faster if you have more speed boost then do the animation faster which kind of makes sense but i think the thing that throws me off is the first one the keep momentum after the animation has finished playing Thanks for subscribing, Why Take Down and Tarek and yeah. Sorry if I said that wrong. <laughs> oh hey Raphael. Um hello Grant and Mark and Ashutosh. I just remembered I was 14, I made a dumb game. And it was going well. Turns out it stopped the character and made it unable to move. Huh. Thanks for your content, you brought me through my university game. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Sorry, I have allergies right now for some reason. Hey, Gig Zebra. Welcome. I also, I always thought there should be pronunciation meta metadata in HTML, especially for words spelled the same, but spoken differently. Yeah. I agree. I think it would help a lot. Hey, Reden or Redden. Thanks, Y Takedown. Although, most of my Unreal content is just me, like, not knowing what I'm doing, but... <laughs> uh, do I work as a freelancer? I mean, depends. If... You can always send me a message or contact me and we can see what it is. Um, okay, um, nah, I lose track of stuff really quickly. So, keep momentum. So how can we do that? So we have this animation, and it stops the player movement, or the speed. So, control space opens your content browser that's docked, and my blueprint is under blueprints here. <laughs> Open it up. It's horrible. I know. So this is after we vault, right? So I have comments here. This is where we vault. I should do an overview of just this one day so people can get a better understanding. Unity or Unreal for beginners? Do you know how to code? Well, I'd recommend Unity. Um. C++ and Unreal is a little. If you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be a little bit of a mess. But their visual scripting system is awesome. Abandoning the game before it broke down. Rip. How to optimize C++ code? That's a very generic question. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on a lot of stuff. You have to profile it and kind of see depends on your code i mean 
It's like, I don't know. That's a pretty vague question. But you can profile code and see how much memory it's taking and how performant it is. And each frame. Mm -mm, glad I help you out. Hi, stream. All right, so for vaulting, um, we're basically performing a knee arrow trace, which is a trace from our knees, like a ray cast in Unity. And we're just making sure something's in front of us and just making sure that the object is not thick enough. So it's not big enough. If it's not big enough, we can vault over it. And it's just doing that because, and it's just doing that by, well, we do a ray cast forwards. It goes to the object. And then what we do is we take the end of that ray cast and we kind of ray cast it back so we can tell where the other side of the object we hit is. And then we use those two points and get the distance between them right here. Distance, if it's less than our threshold, and we meet this condition, which is that it actually hits something, then we can vault. Um, this is the timeline we set up on the last stream. That kind of gives the player a threshold. Like it waits until a certain time before actually vaulting. If it's not close enough to the cube, or whatever we want to call it. What was it? Cuboid something. Hey, Metamax, what's up? <laughs> yeah, Grant, I, I don't, I tried writer in Unity and I was just like so overwhelmed, but I'm a simple person. Like it works for a lot of people and it, they have great tools, but I was just like, this is a lot for me. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know how to code, Unreal's visual scripting is way better. I mean, I haven't tried Unity's, but like... Do you need to try it to know that it's better? No. <laughs> Alright, and so after that... Here it just resets the timer or stops the timer if we meet the threshold and then we actually So this is what we were trying to do. Um, we were trying to store the character velocity before vaulting and then reset it to see if that would help keep the momentum, but it doesn't. It does not. And we disable collision because we're going over the vault box. We set the movement mode to flying. And we just play an animation, the vaulting animation. Uh, we delay it before setting the collision and the movement back to normal. And then here we're setting the velocity back, but that's not the issue. Um, that's actually the issue we're trying to figure out, finding out what the issue is. <laughs> I don't know. Um... I like Unity when it comes to shader stuff. I haven't actually tried shader stuff in Unreal. Or that much in Unity either. So we use a root motion animation here. That means the animation's moving the character, not us. In the code. So... The issue is here we have this animation, right? So let's go to the animation wherever it is. Mannequin, animations, mm. I think it's called, there's two of them, jumping to montage. So here's one of them, it's kind of messed up, it's like going sideways for some reason. Um, I've been learning C++ for one month and I've completed the most basic where to learn C++ for game dev. Are you looking to learn it within Unreal or just in general? Um, 
There's this Udemy course by Pikuma, Pikuma actually. Or Pikuma, they have pretty cool, cool courses. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like sniffling. Um, but I really like this guy. So his courses usually go on sale, but here you can make a 2D game from scratch with C++ and Lua. With C++, SDL, ECS. ECS is Entity Component System. Um, you can also do this one. 3D software with C, like from scratch, doing computer graphics. This one's new, physics engine programming, that's cool. I kind of skimmed this one, and he also has a Raycast programming with C. This is all like kind of from scratch. So if you want to learn C++, these are like good ways to learn game dev without necessarily using an engine. Um, it's also on Udemy. Which I think, like, like some of them are on sale. I'm like giving this guy free advertising. <laughs> but it's just pretty good courses, you know. I recommend what's good. Uh, Metamax, it's Stream Beats by Harris Heller on Spotify. It's royalty free music. And it's free. <laughs> it's probably going sideways because that's how the character animation was made. Unity sprite animations look weird sometimes and you have to add or remove a frame or two. Oh, okay. Well, the issue is like, it's it doesn't seem to be really stopping or maybe it is. But the animation seems fine. It's the transition from that to like back to the walking animation that's like stopping it. <laughs> that's slowing it down. So in the blueprint, we have a default slot and that's where we're playing the animation montage with it, which is the vault. Um, but then to switch from that to oh, one sec. So here, select the actual character so we can match it correctly in game. All right, and now the animation preview matches. So if we vault, you see, even in the animation windows, it like. It does show that it's idle before it lands, but like the transition isn't smooth. So maybe blend tree. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of blend tree. I should give it a name. Hey, Umer. Hey, Georgios, 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 that's a cool name. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad you liked the videos. The videos are kind of painful to make since the Unity documentation is not great. <laughs> it's mostly just me banging my head for like hours trying to figure out what's wrong. Manny, no, this is gonna be I haven't changed it yet, but I'm gonna make it a female character. Cause we need more representation, and I'm a female. So I just wanna see more females. <laughs> hey, Walter. What's up? You should, uh, okay. So blend trees, let's learn how to make a blend tree. I have no idea. All right. Oh, oh yeah. Blend trees. Blend between two animations or more. This has no information. Thanks, Unreal. 
I feel so much. Well, there's blend nodes that you can put in an animation graph. But that's more for like if you have two animations playing at the same time. Mm -mm. That's not what we want. We're not playing it at the same time. Locomotion based blending. Blend trees and unity are called blend trees too. Hey Ilba, what's up? Nothing much, just <laughs> living life. <laughs> what's up with you? Unreal, yeah, we have blend trees. Blend spaces, maybe. Right click. Animation. Mm, blend space. Okay, and then there's blend space 1D. Blend space 1D. Okay. This is how we do stuff. We Google. You can think of a blend space like a 2D graph where each input along one axis is plotted at different points. The blended animation is calculated by blending the animations on the- holy shoot, that scared the f <laughs> Thank you for the donation, that was really loud. <laughs> um, thanks for the donation. How can we control animation play speed in Actor? Pretty sure that's a node for that. Um... Well, I know for a montage here, when you do play animation montage, you can pass in the play rate here, which is how fast it goes. It's currently at one, which is default. So this is just if you're playing a montage. And then I believe here, I can't see with this lamp in the way. Whoa. Um. Okay. All right, here in your, for example, this is a blend space. And you can set the play rate in the animation graph for your animation. Like if you just click your animation, it has a play rate that you can set there. <laughs> Quick, clip that. I don't know what that means. Clip that. What is clip that? All right. I hope that answered your question. That really scared me, that random noise. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> um, oh, what am I doing back here? One dimensional format between any number of poses, but doing only on a single input value would be when you have a character that automatically orients toward the direction they're moving. If your character cannot move in multiple directions, a 1D blend space could blend from idle to walk and ultimately run based on a single speed value. That looks like something we want. We only want to base it on one thing. Just like a speed. <laughs> oh. I see. Yeah, I was thinking... I don't know, Streamlabs has like the membership that you can buy monthly. And then they allow you to stream like in two different places at once. Um, so I was thinking maybe doing that here and Twitch. But I don't know how much internet speed I need for that. Yeah, thanks, Geek Zebra. I don't get what you're trying to do right now. I'm just... Trying to... When I vault over, like, it stop... Oh. When you vault, it, like, stops the character's previous velocity when transitioning back to idle or run. 
and I think a blend tray would help blend it so it'd be faster in transitioning from the montage over to the um uh, event graph <laughs> <laughs> Damn, why am I sniffing? I blame my dog. <laughs> Sorry. I was literally fine before I started streaming. Uh, my nose is running. Alright, so let's make the right click animation. Animation, blend space 1D, and what is our skeleton? Oh, I did. I wanted to hover over it. Blueprints. No. Animation. Um, the one we want is this one, I believe. Yeah, okay. And we call this Vault 2. I don't know the naming conventions in Unreal. Vault 2... Um, vault to idle or run. Rename vault to run. Mm, so three BBS, BBS, MBS. It's not a blend space solution though. Blend spaces are usually used in a specific state where you need to change something dynamically. Like aiming, walking. I think you need to preserve the speed. You need to change the way you're moving through the obstacle. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Mr. Nibbles. I'll take a look. <laughs> So, blend space would not work well. Unreal. Um, animation montage preserve speed. Um, blend out. I think this one. I'm working. That incorporates. Da, 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 da. But when it finishes, the isn't blending properly. You do it manually in your animation graph. Blend between your movement state using cached poses. Huh. If you're using root motion, change it to not use root motion. Damn. Um, so we can either do that. So we can either not use root motion which would solve the issue because root motion is messing it up or we could cache our previous animation pose and then this seems a little I think your way is better to not use the root motion oh man that's going to be a little annoying. Unrotate vector. Mm. 
Returns result of vector A rotated by the... Um... I know this guy usually has a video on it. Well, probably not, but... Though, what the f... f is? <laughs> I was about to say the word. Um, rotation from X vector. By unrotating, you're basically... Multiplying the vector by the inverse. There. That can help you. Try deactivating root motion. Alright. So in our animation, just search root. Or not. because uh, we're using ah this lamp is just like in my way okay this is a montage so the montage is using the root animation one and I forgot how to change it I think it's somewhere along here. Or not. I'm not from Turkey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right click the green bar below the viewport I see new slot oh I don't think that's what I want oh so there's jumping to Maybe I can just disable it within the animation itself. Save. Save. Yeah, I have the animation already. I just disabled root motion. Oh, this jump is horrible. Wow, it's literally... Oh! Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. I was not, like, expecting that. Oh, it doesn't actually move the player. Ugh. That's gonna be annoying. Don't mind me while I eat my cracker. Pardon. Mm, sorry, I'm just always hungry. 
<laughs> this jumping animation should have a copy where it is animated. How to move to Canada? I definitely did not search that up. Should have a copy where it's animated in place. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was awkward. Alright, let me do that for the other one too. Thanks, Raphael. MVP. Let's see what happens. Whoa. Alright, well, it's definitely. Now it's like rotating. Sideways. Hey, Shubin, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> wow. All right, well, it's moving, so. All right, it's pretty cool how it kind of twirls, actually. At least it moves. Use normalized root. <laughs> Alright, Raphael, what's the next step? I will continue eating my cookie. Movement only occurs when you're inputting movement, right? Hmm. I mean, if we press spacebar, there's a certain threshold before you actually hit the wall that it can wait until it vaults over, if that makes sense. Probably not. So you need, to, you need to tell it to move manually. But if it moves manually, will that stop the animation from moving it? Because it's just like freaking out right now. It's going super far. All right, let's add a movement input node. Unity versus Unreal. Depends on what you want to do. It's a tool. You can do anything with your tool as long as you are good at it. <laughs> it's not that it won't stop the animation. Um, Raphael. It's that the animation's already mo being moved, right? And I'm not moving it, so it's just moving automatically. Or maybe this just overrides it completely. This overrides all the movement. Okay. Without root motion, if movement is independent from the animation, makes sense. So we want to move it in the forwards direction of the player. Mm -hmm. Scale is whether we're moving positive or negative, or like to s just a multiplier. If true, always add the input ignoring the result of move input ignored. Move input ignored. 
Um, locks or unlocks movement input, consecutive call stacks. Oh, so this like kind of like forces it. All right, I got gotcha. you. So we want to do this. I mean, we just play it like I'm pressing forward. Wow, what what is going on? Okay. Oh, now it works. Okay, I see what you mean. Okay, I guess it does depend on if I'm playing if I'm pressing the forwards. I see what you mean. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> All right, so first let's add the movement input. Um, I don't know how long this lasts. Maybe I can just do this. Yeah. When the vault triggers, we play an animation and we force it to move forwards. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> So then this, I'm wondering if add movement input is on every frame. Oh, so no, it does not. All right. Well, then I know the solution for that. All right. So let's make a timeline to act like kind of a tick event and let's call it vault forwards and so on the update of this we're just going to call our movement input oh i moved everything until the animation is finished oh finished playing so when we play the animation let's start the timeline from the start then update. Um, no, actually, okay, let's do something. So we want a sequence node. Yeah, thanks, Raphael. <laughs> so a sequence will perform things in a sequence, literally like how you call functions multiple times. How you call multiple functions <laughs> in one function. It's like that. Um, but with blueprints, it's hard to do that. So they have a node for that. So a sequence, first we do something. So first we start um, this tick to move our actor forwards. And then we do our delay. Oh, actually it depends on the... So then we do our delay. And after our delay is completed, then we want to stop the timeline. So that makes sense. And let's do the same for this one. Because we're picking between two animations, which I'm wondering if there's an easier way to do that instead of doing like this switch on int, which just takes in a random integer, zero or one. And depending on if it's zero or one, it plays a different animation montage. So first, let's play this timeline here to make this easier for us. Um, and then we do the delay. And after the delay, after, mm, after the delay, we want to do another sequence and stop the timeline and then set the collision back. Ah, oh, this is a mess. So after the delay is done, then we stop this timeline and then we continue setting. I don't think you need this delay anymore. Pourquoi? Pourquoi? The delay is just so I know when the animation is finished. 
the length of the animation. Um, which makes sense. Right? <laughs> Alright, so basically, we play the animation and we start like a tick or a timeline which just runs on every frame until you stop it in our case which our length is five seconds you double click it, it tells you the length of it but our animation isn't even that long so then after the animations completed yeah we can use the animation timeline but i want to make it dependent on the animation itself not on the timeline. You can set the t a timeline that plays for the duration of the anima animation and use the finish node from it. How do I input the time? Is it called new time? Unreal new time. Timeline, new time. All right, another, how to change the timeline duration. I'm playing two different animations. I want to make the timeline dependent on the length of each animation. Sorry, I stopped. Yeah, I know. You can change the length. I want to make the timeline dependent on the length of the animation. So unless there's a way to dynamically change the length of the timeline, maybe it's set new time. Hey, Abby. Is using event tick bad practice? What are alternatives? Um, the issue with Eventic is that you can only like use it once in your blueprint and so I just don't want to have it clutter everywhere like have a bunch of stuff coming out from this Eventic I guess you can make another event from this Eventic that's called <laughs> on every frame and then subscribe and have other stuff subscribe to it I don't know the exact performance relationship unfortunately the length is not a variable that doesn't make any sense because you'd think it'd be a variable um did you make everything in blueprints so far yeah mm. I mean, you can use timelines to like see if it. Why it should be used and why it should never be used in blueprints for most large projects. There's been tons of times where epic optimizations have said never to use take in a blueprint. This is the case, it's usually reserved for small operations. That said, a lot of the games use tick and use blueprint nati nativization to significantly reduce the costs. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll just share the link if you want to read it. 
Hey Cushman. Um, I just watched some Unreal videos on like two times the speed. And I was like, this is fine. I know what I'm doing. And then I just banged my head to see what I'm actually doing. <laughs> <laughs> See, Raphael, I'm right sometimes. <laughs> mm. Timers too? Right? Uh, timer. I did that somewhere. Set timer. And you can call how much, and you can control how much it's being called. So how long to wait before executing the delegate? And you can set it to looping. So those are some options. Thanks, Raphael. I need to block player input when you're adding that. Oh. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Hmm. How do I do that? Block? Set ignore movement input. All right. I know this. I did this before. So ignore the player input. Well, let's actually do this before our timeline is called. So play from start and let's actually first ignore input or movement input. And then after we're done here, let's set it back to true or false. If true, it's ignored. All right, so we don't want to ignore it. Imagine trying to follow a Samian video at two times the speed. Oh yeah, I, I go a little fast, so I definitely wouldn't follow my video at two times the speed. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Um, Hi, sorry. <laughs> Hi, final attack. How are you? Um, vault drifting. That sounds fun. That definitely didn't work. Force the movement. Oh! Ahoy! <laughs> uh, final attack. Um, I think we're, we're doing something. Wow. Alright. What if I just don't... Okay, so it's... Just horribly fast. Thank you, Rafa. <laughs> what am I eating? Um, they're called Thin Addictives by Nani's. I don't know. They are really addictive. They're like, well, they seem healthy. I don't know anything. These days are probably not healthy anymore. Everything's bad for you. Um, but they didn't have a seem to have a lot of ingredients, and they're really tasty and make a good snack. 
like so. The scale value of 0.5. Okay, yeah, let's try that. Um, This chair is not from Costco. Costco. I think it's from Staples? Or Office Depot? Um, sorry, this is what happens when I stream before lunch. Like, literally. This is why I stream after, but... I get more people... Before lunch. <laughs> but I'm always hungry! Yeah, this is UE5. So, if, if I'm stationary, it works, but then our animation goes sideways. And for some reason, the I can't move anymore. It's not letting me move. I mean, this chair does look pretty generic, so... Hey, head ho, or Jojo. Uh, yeah, I can't move after it. Um, so it's not running this, it seems. Let's put a breakpoint here. So it should pause if we hit the breakpoint correctly. Oh, it does. Beta version? I have no idea. <laughs> well, let's see. Step over. It is calling set ignore input and I have it to false. Um, so, um, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, now this is getting called again. What? Now it got called. Huh? That's quite strange. Okay, now it's just working. Out of nowhere. It's okay. Mm. Maybe the variable is inverted. Maybe it should be false. No. If true, the movement is ignored. This is not my first live stream. Um, I've been trying to stream on Wednesdays. Hey, from Sir Siberia. Wow. Hello. I have no idea how to pronounce your name. But hello, that is very far away. <laughs> It does have collision, but I set collision on the player to disabled until after. And this is getting called, so. So there's some problems with this. 
more bugs are in, being introduced here now. Um, and for some reason, the animation is tilting sideways. I was not doing that before, with the root motion enabled, like the this one. Ah. Oh my god. Alright, let me just move my player here. Make it easier for myself. See, it kind of rotates. Thank you. Tayaz, Tayaz, Tayaz. It's being called again. Hmm? Enable breakpoint. Play. All right, it's called. Step over, and we set the delay back, and then it's called again. For some reason. Stop and then reset this. Why is this getting called again? Thanks, Joe, for subscribing, and Jack. No, oh, Jake. Oh, I just butchered that name. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm just doing something wrong. Delay. Okay, that resets it. I'm rusty in Unreal. Me too. <laughs> Um, only one delay should be called. It depends on what animation is currently being played. Let's see again. All right. So we have that animation being played. Bye bye. See you later. Thanks for coming. Try skipping the switch on it. That's probably a smart idea. <laughs> I'm like trying to complicate my life right now. Um, by doing it randomly. Let's just try one animation at a time. Okay, so it plays this step over, step over, and then I can't move. Nani? Nandake. Nandake. All right, so. Step over. Still. What's the problem here? Um, I don't really know. It's. I I set it to ignore movement input, but it's like not unsetting it for some reason so i'm just stepping over seeing what happens here will it always break your movement after a vault you mean with the root motion on yeah um 
Um, okay, what's this velocity that we have set? Oh, okay. I wonder what this red line... What these line colors mean. Well, let's see. All right. Uh, okay. Now it did. Huh? Okay, now it can't move. Now I can. Now it's still sometimes working, sometimes doesn't. Which is very strange. Very, 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 very strange indeed. I do not know what's going on. My client, their parkour. My client shipped their parkour game. Oh, nice. So this is not even running. Let's just see. This is this is running. Let me tell you something. What? <laughs> tell me. What is your So you're saying this no just doesn't work reliably? <laughs> I think all of this is glitchy. All of this is hacky. <laughs> My dog is coughing. Um, nested tracing? Nested tracing. Um, I'm not sure what that entails. I'm just doing a bunch of arrow traces at once. I do one arrow trace. In this case, I do one right after that does it backwards. So I can tell how thick an object is. Full-time game developer. Not really, no. I do this more as a side. Um, and YouTube. Well, as a big side. <laughs> Alright, so this is... Was there no way to do it with the root motion? Because this is complicated. So basically what you try to do is that one tracing determines is the tracing in the next level going to work 
and then performs the related action. Mm, I'm not sure. I don't I'm not I don't think I'm doing that. Velocity is being set to result every frame within. Apply root motion to velocity if you're using root motion, changing the first line. Oh, hey, Anish, what's up? Reserving velocity from root motion. <laughs> um. Root motion from everything wasn't worth it. Oh, great. Wonderful. Hello. Uh, I do not want to mispronounce your name, but thank you for subscribing. Welcome. <laughs> um, I think group motion is kind of a hassle sometimes. I just don't quite understand why this is sometimes working and sometimes it's not working. Still on this issue, yes. <laughs> mm. Block movement. Okay, let's... Set block movement to false. Or to true. And then let's just set it back to false here. Um, so we set a boolean now. What do we actually? Motion warping. Motion warping, root motion. That's not the issue technically that we're having. The issue is in the transition from the end of the animation that uses root motion animation montage to an animation that doesn't use root motion like idle or running. It stops the player velocity. Like, it just kills the player velocity. Um, motion warping is more like, while the animation is playing, you want it to go to a certain place. But we're more like, the animation has stopped playing, and we want it to not lose our velocity. If we're, you can skip the set, ignore movement input if you're using the boolean, but if we're using the boolean, we still need to ignore something. Like, how do we stop the player input?
You know what I mean? Like, the player can still input, we just set a boolean that doesn't do anything. Oh no, it's fine. Thanks for your suggestion, app portion. <laughs> yeah, Unreal 5 is pretty cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. A branch in the input events. Oh. Well, there's an issue. The issue is that our input events are not in the blueprint. Because I decided to make this a C project. And that was not a good idea. Because now the actual movement code. Oh. Oh, my mom called me. Whoops. <laughs> Oopsies. One second. I don't want to miss a call. Wonderful, I don't know my visual studio. You can still create new inputs and use them as far as I know. Uh, I don't even know my passwords. Oh, well, I guess it lets me use it, actually. Project settings. Project settings. Project settings. Project settings. Project settings. Under edit. Input. Unreal convert from blue from C to blueprint. <laughs> Usually people do it the opposite, opposite blueprint to C++, but I'm like... I'm not gonna do that. Whoa, I just clicked this random link and it could not have been good. Oh man. Okay, okay. Remove the binaries, delete intermediate, delete saved, delete source. Open uh, your U project in a notepad. Uh, I can see this going very wrong. Especially since I edited. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to. Do I have to map all of this manually? Oh my god. I have to do all these functions manually? That seems annoying. Ah. Why do I complicate my life? Or maybe I can just have another project that is in C++, that is not C++ and just copy the blueprints over. 
What do you mean try calling the inputs? Thanks for subscribing. Movement. Hmm. I am so lost and that's okay that's okay that's okay that's okay trying to learn on unity and I keep messing up each time part of the process soon you won't mess up you can call the input events from the pro in the project settings in the event graph yeah but like all the logic is in the code huh <laughs> All right. Um, give me a second. Let's let's see if I have another project I can open up. That maybe. What is this? I don't even know what this is. I want to see what happens when I open this. Pro <laughs> I have no idea what this project is. Yeah, but I don't want to remake anything if it exists already. I'm lazy, all right? It's either copy it or don't copy it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, I see things. Okay, what the heck is this? Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> that was so loud. <laughs> ah. I'm getting scared today. Too much. Oh, I guess this was just me playing around with tutorials. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh. Oh. Nadi hodo. Nani? Nandaku. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, this sounds like something. Something we can get behind here. <laughs> Sorry. Input system and camera really finicky. Yeah. I have tutorials. If that helps. Sorry for this jump scare. I also. Do we need a CS degree to be a AI or gameplay programmer? Good job. Um, it looks good to have one. But you don't necessarily need one if you have a good portfolio. And even if you do have a degree, it does not guarantee anything. <laughs> you still need to have a good portfolio, even if you have a degree. Wait, this is the... I'm getting so confused here. Alright. Movement input. Do I watch lots of anime? Yeah. <laughs> I do. I got cut up to one piece the other day, and I'm really proud of myself. Over 900 episodes. But now I have to wait. 
every week for a new episode and that also makes me sad at the same time yeah like you can get a degree and like not know how to do anything like a lot of people do that actually where they kind of cheat their way through the degree and then like they don't know what to do most of the time that's why i'm saying it's not even guaranteed because even if you have a degree, a bunch of people have a degree, so like, this isn't... You have to show your projects what you've done. Alright, so... I wonder what happens if we do this. And in the code... Whoever we call this move forward and move right... I don't want to call it here. Just... This is horrible. <laughs> this is the worst code I've ever written. <laughs> I am so ashamed. Oh. All right. So that worked. Uh -huh. See, things are easy when you do it my way. Uh, branch if the block movement is false false then we can do our stuff things are easy when you're lazy Oh, it needs compiling. Hello. Oh. Um, is it bad that I don't know how to do that? I thought it would just compile it automatically. I can see your chat. Compiling. Go control shift B. Uh in Visual Studio. Oh. Thank you. E blur mean. You need to compile it in UE. Thanks, uh, Ash Ashitosh. Sorry, I don't want to say your name. Hey, Lord, I like your anime profile picture. Um, uh, Demon Slayer. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, that no, yeah. I haven't watched it enough. That while. Um. Y'all, y'all are confusing me. Okay, wait, let me remove this ignore movement input thing. Um, first of all. And, okay. Is hot reload buggy? I don't even know. Okay, so something's happening because this is really weird. Like, horribly weird. Like, it's not working. It did seem to compile the code, though. <laughs> Our movement's not working now. Wonderful. I love that. I love that for us. No, I don't. Um... 
It's because I used the first person template, isn't it? It's not that I can move forward, it's that... Yeah, I can't move forward, actually. So, let's run, move forward. Uh -huh. It's because I didn't link it. Oh, it's because... <laughs> oh, please, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse my ignorance. It's only calling one thing at a time here. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Let's not do a sequence. Yes, let's just do one branch for each because it's messing it up. Wait, this is false. Okay. The, com the condition is if we're being blocked. If we're not, then we can move. Sigh. It feels weird, but, uh, I don't know why, maybe it's just me. Oh, -ho. all right. Well, my movement's not getting blocked, which is wonderful. So wonderful. Wait, is it still like... It's still st kind of stopping the animation, see? Not as much, but it's like a little bit. You see how there's a little... PC configs i7 10th gen 16 gigabytes of ram rtx 3080 4k monitor it's not a pc but whatever oh actually from the back it doesn't look bad it's from the side that it looks a little we can fix that though all right, so no, it's not blocking anymore. Thank you, thank you for the tips. So if we press space, normally it's fine. But if we add in movement input, it like scales it. More than needed. You know what I mean? So why is that happening? Let's take a look. Uh, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, I'm just trying to organize this a little. Yeah, ignore movement is glitchy. I wished ML API was finished. Ah. Maybe in a couple of more years. <laughs> Thanks for the help, by the way, Raphael. MVP, once again. If you think it's not transitioning well, you can enable movement before the animation ends by a certain margin. I see. Well, the issue is now that Depending on if I'm pressing forwards, it like goes faster. Actually, if I'm running, yeah, see? Some, the length is variable. Variable.
not desirable. Uh-uh. Hmm. So... It's supposed to block inputs, yeah. But it doesn't do it well. I can set the velocity when it starts. Oh, you mean the player velocity? So, do something like that. Set the player velocity forwards. Their forward. Get actor forward. Uh, forward vector. Get actor forward vector. This feels so hacky. I know! <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> but it'll do. <laughs> Alright, right click. Uh, convert pin to float. We can just multiply it and we'll use that for our velocity. Wait, what happened to it? Convert pin to float. Oh, there. Let's multiply it by a speed, right? Okay, so... Oh. So right here... Let's add another sequence pin. And then called set velocity. Uh, let's put this here and then let's call the delay okay so we set the velocity there and and then we well i think we'd want to actually change this depending on the speed of the player but that's another thing that's to set the velocity before the animation uh I see. Um okay then, never mind. Um Oh. Okay. <laughs> so then uh ah So then let's set the animation, uh the velocity. I'm so lost it's fine and then we play it and then we should have constant velocity every time we do it let's see aha I think that's working why is the animation sideways uh, 20 is way too low well uh, let's try this actually is working though Unexpected. Well, uh, thank you, Raphael. You're amazing. <laughs> Whoa, what's with our player movement? We're gonna have to. F Something's wrong here sometimes. Just the player movement's like weird. Eighty is still too low. Let's try five hundred. I want to see what happens. If you set the velocity in the end of the node, uh, gotcha. I see what you mean. Yeah. I'd probably do a more seamless transition then. Okay, that's too much. 400. Alright, 400 seems okay. 
and the animation itself. What if we put the play rate to two? Just to see it, what happens if you play it faster. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> I definitely did not like that or whatever it was. Yeah, I know I need to use like lurping and stuff. Damn. I should just start streaming at this time just so I can get Raphael in here. <laughs> what scripting language does this use? Um, this is using visual scripting. Um, so connecting nodes visually. Oh, -ho. all right. I see. I see. I see what's going on. I see what's going on. First of all, I liked 500. Then, here where we wait until it's a certain distance, we can actually increase it. We have all these variables to play around with, after all. Aha! But yeah, I see the... I need that lurping. But you see, now we can actually lurp because we have the control. Unlike root motion where we didn't have any control over the character. Now we have this control. Hello, did you make the animations? No. I'm not that talented. Hey lord. I'm from India. Nice. Um, these animations, the vaulting, were from... Um, you... Cisco? You sis, you uh, you blah 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 blah. blah I don't know the name. Um, Uisco. Oh my god. This person. Oh wow, my stream is <laughs> shows up on the Google search, <laughs> the parkour. <laughs> Uisco has some videos, and he, and they, sorry, uh, have some free animations. Like, if you go here, uh, I'll just sunk it. Got some of them from there, and then I bought a Sea Lazy Animation Pack, which has more crazy animations. I'm on Google, hell yeah. Well, actually, I'm on Google a lot if you just put like. Input system, I'm the second video. <laughs> Which is cool. Put Unity in front. Oh, I messed up. Still the second video. You put literally anything related to the input system and I show up to some degree sometimes, which is cool. But I noticed the other. <laughs> hey, Max. Oh, I answered your question. Sorry, I'm like... Distraught. Or, that's not the word. Um, unfocus. Heck yeah. I gotta help out the people with this silly documentation that Unity has. No offense, Unity. If you're watching. <laughs> Alright, well I, I think I I think I I think this is good though, because now we can lerp however we want. You know, we have more control. I don't know how to fix the sideways thing though. That's kind of strange. Um let me add back our other animation here. Um so it can choose one or the other.
remove. So it randomly selects between two animations, right? My question is still there. What is your question? Um, um, as per your question, this is, it's like in the animation itself, like this is the animation. It like goes sideways automatically only when you enable root motion. Actually, it still does it. Oh, no problem, Max. Maybe it's this root animation, root motion, root. Uh, uh, I can't speak today. Root bone that will be locked. I'm using the reference pose. There's also animation first frame, which doesn't seem to do anything. Open the curves tab. Wow. I wish I could understand what the heck you mean. Here? There's nothing. Open the curves tab in the animation timeline. There's zero curves. Unreal 5 is very similar to Unreal 4. I'm pretty sure just mostly the UI changed apart from the, you know, new features like Nanite and Lumen. There's no curves though. Unreal. Sideways. Sidewalk. Force root lock. Oh yeah, it is. What does that do? Force root law. Unreal. You can make your character move with your animation by moving the root bone. This is called root motion. Force root locks, uh, removes the root bone animation movement. Uh, removes the root motion, but does not. A okay. It is the, it's an artifact. Y'all, I don't know what that means. Unreal artifact. Artifacts are, this is a strange site. Oh, this is like the actual <laughs> game. Artifacts generated. Wonderful explanation. Ugh. Artifacts, I guess, are just stuff. Is a term for anti thing that's doing something wrong. Oh, okay. Side effect, I see. Will I use C? Perhaps. I want to get this working at least without C, and then I will consider moving. Um. Mm 
Hey, water. Yeah, I'm still on the same problem. <laughs> I'm still doing the same thing for seven weeks. It's fine. <laughs> Thanks, Raphael, for the emotional support. <laughs> I need to keyframe it. Oh, how wonderful. Add a curve. All right. Uh, Unreal, how to keyframe animation. Oh, well, yeah, I'm still at it both ways. It's only two keyframes. No need to add in a curve. A curve is like click the add button keyframe. Okay, where? It's me. Um, it's fine. Everything's fine. It's a dog meme where everything's on fire. Everything's fine. No, I don't want to notify anyone. Oh, I can right click. Is it possible to mix animations together to make new ones? I think that's like blending them together. <laughs> Unreal blend animations, like where you can play animations at the same time and different parts of the body. Blending animations, layered animations similar to in Unity. You can do it with blueprints or blend spaces, layered animations, I think is what you want. Where you can like, in this case, they're like running and shooting. And those are like two different animations. So, yeah. All right. Open the skeleton tree tab. Select the root bone. Rrr. Okay. I have it selected. Wow, this guy is awkward. I should probably enable the locking thing, right? Select the root bone, yes. Um, ideally this would turn into a game. Lord, uh, Ark? Ark? And find the frame where it starts to rotate. Okay, well you lost me there. Where are the frames? Oh, here it is. Okay. 11. Oh, okay. Alright, well, I think I need to record. Mannequins, animations. Jumping to, uh, we'll do a fix. Oh, add key. I don't even. Stupid lamp. <laughs> I need to buy a lighting setup, but they're so expensive. It's like two hundred dollars for one light. I just want to use my lamp. No need to record. 
What? Okay, wait. Let's stop it then. Where's the add button? Hang on. Where? Oh! I see it. Okay. Uh, bro. Ha shouldn't it be, like, near the timeline? Like, am I... Oh, wait, what's going on here? Okay, no, this is... Okay, this is good. This is fine. Everything's fine. I know how to do this. Alright, we find it where it starts to rotate, which is... Come around here, put a key there. So... Mm, and that's... Rotate it back. Oh! I didn't put a key. Okay, wait. Did we start off correctly? Oh. Why is this guy all over the place? Oh my god, this is a mess. Add a keyframe at the start, at the end, and then in the end. Okay, how can I uh, delete or remove? Okay. Add a key at the start. Add a key at the end. Um, hey, Matt, sorry. How to make a random NPC character model system and how to make Like NPC AI? I'd search up NPC AI for that. I don't haven't really gotten into that yet. Um I know there's a bunch of behavioral tree information and USCO actually has a character creator system video that I just made. Is breaking even more? Um, oh, WT8, what the heck? Is breaking even more? You can blend animations, alter them, and create your own UE5 demo. Everyone recommends a UE5 demo. I still haven't downloaded it. <laughs> Why, when I create a key, it like messes it up? See, when I put a key here, it rotates it. Why? Why is it rotating? Control rig. I don't know what that is. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. It's kind of like a, a K system. Hmm, ooh, fancy. Sorry. Why does it change it when I add a key? Like, that makes no sense. Okay, the yaw is changing for some reason. We don't want it to change. Okay. What? I thought I just fixed it. Am I? Am I okay? 
Comment what's going on. Okay. Save. No? Okay. How do I... Ah. Okay. Hey, Daniel. Yeah, it's the y'all. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's something I wish I've never seen. Ooh, 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 ah. <laughs> Whoa, this is so trippy. Okay, wait, I want to do that again. Oh, no, this is... Woo-wee! <laughs> okay, anyways. Okay, we're here. Right, then why are we going over here? Raphael is always in the room. I shake my head, feel sorry, you obviously already know. So why are you always in here? Woman privileges, yes, be pretty, and there will always be a creep out there willing to help. Um, I think you should read your comment back and just think about what you said. And the fact that you're a father is kind of shameful that you're even saying that. Like, uh, I'm gonna put you in a timeout because you need to learn your lesson. <laughs> Literally, like someone's helping on the internet and just because I'm a girl you felt the need to comment that like you're the one who's looking too deep into it <laughs> what are your thoughts on the new macbook pros i have no idea i've not tried it <laughs> i have my pc and i don't really leave my room much so <laughs> I don't need a laptop. See, shouldn't you be ashamed to your father and you had to be timed out on a random stream? <laughs> it's kinda... Yeah, I'm still trying to fix it. Thanks, Justin. Uh, butterfly? I don't know what that is. I would just find another one at this point. All right, well. I try. I'm really interested though, like how, how do I... Oh, I add a key here. I see. I see. Oh man. Why is this so horribly bad? Every time I add a key, it messes up everything else. Unreal is tough on a MacBook, but developing is amazing. Yeah, I liked the MacBook Pro to do coding on. It's pretty nice. Are you trying to make him turn to the left? I'm just trying to make him not turn. You know? I'm just gonna delete this. Right now it, it like does this turn when it's jumping for no reason. What's your PC config? I thought I told you. I thought you asked before. <laughs> um, i7 10th gen, RTX 3080. Um, 16 gigabytes of RAM, SSD. Uh, one terabyte SSD. Two of them, I think. 
No, I think I have more than one turbo. Tony, I wanted to develop in Unreal, but I'm not good with C++. I'm not even using C++, so if you want, you can go and learn Unreal. Because I haven't even been using C++, I've just been using the visual scripting system. And all of this is with the visual scripting system. Yeah, well... And I'm wondering if the animation pack that I bought, you know has an animation for this, but they just have so many animations that I'm... that I don't even know. Escape. Oh, so escape sounds... I actually want to add more animations, but... <laughs> Apparently the person who made this pack takes requests for animations. So I guess if I ever need it, I can just pay to get an animation done. Because I'm definitely not doing it. <laughs> I love C Sharp, so my heart belongs to Unity. That's fine. It looks like the actual rotation isn't changing, but the legs are going in the direction. So it may be something that needs to be changed with the actual bones. I don't know much about Unreal, so I'm not sure. Unreal got many video tutorials. I9. Whoa. Thirty-two RAM. Holy. Well, obviously you have no issues. That's insane. <laughs> That's like... Amazing... Specs. <laughs> Sorry, my sniffles are coming back. Mm. I guess this... Um, yeah, there's not a lot of C++ and real tutorials. I mean, there are some, but not in a whole lot. Ooh. The other one's fine, though. I like how this is looking, though. I think if we just adjust the values, it's be fine. The problem was the root motion. Yeah. Mm, wee. I also hate the jumping of this character. <laughs> also, there needs to be a distinction when we wall run and wall climb, because sometimes it wall climbs when you don't want to. And also, there's a issue with the crouch that it can crouch outside of the bounds. It's starting to look good. Thanks. The vault can be improved. The animation... Um, maybe I'll just stick to the one that works, and then if needed later, I'll just pay someone. Whatever. Um, uh, I think there's a... This is the other project. Okay. I'm confused. I thought I closed out of this. Okay. And if... Okay. So I'm just gonna disable the one that does not work. Which I think is this one, actually. Let me just remove... Oh, and my... Sh Oh, Visual Studio, why do you do this to me? I just closed you. I wish it was harder to open a Visual Studio because I always open it by accident. All right, so let's just play that one animation all the time so it doesn't freak out. Oh, well, there's an issue there. Oh, because if we press it too near the vault, 
It doesn't vault correct. Oh, that's another thing. Oh, geez. Um, if too near vault, then trip over cuboid or just not vault. I'm wonderful with descriptions. This would be a not a feature because it exists more like a bug, but more of an improvement. Maybe a little bit of both. All right, so I think this one is kind of done. We just need to adjust the values a little bit, but we can just put that done for now. <laughs> you can cancel the vault if it's too close. Yeah, that's also a thing. I just put it on the to-do list. Why do you do this to me? Because I can't. Yeah, I, I don't like Visual Studios too. Thanks, Raphael. And thanks, Geek Zebra, for your... I have $400 in Unity assets, so I have to stay with Unity. <laughs> well, okay then. <laughs> I guess that's a good reason. Apparently, you need to set the player location before vaulting. Um, well, we're doing it skill-based. If they do it too early, then too late, then I want to make them trip or something. Um, no, Chad, it depends. You have to read the license to make sure that they allow you to. <laughs> Is the trigger for vaulting the whole block or the edges of the cube? The trigger is if we press space within a certain distance of the vault object and if it's like the length is short enough. So it does it here because you see the it ray casts it back to see what the thickness is. But here it doesn't because it's too thick to vault over. So we just have to press the space bar within a certain threshold. So if I press it here, it doesn't. I press it closer, it does. Um, did you watch Naruto? Yeah. Uh, uh, Shippuden and the original, not the Boruto thing. <laughs> and Baki. I think I watched a couple episodes of Baki. But it was just so much violence and I was just like, Ugh. I don't know if I like that too much. Ryzen 9 with 64 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, Mr. Fancy or Mrs. or I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I wonder if there's an equivalent for Mr. and Mrs. if it's like generic. You know, I use they as a generic term. I wonder if there's a generic term for that. Um, code AI for a living. Oh, well, that makes sense. Why did you... You can also, like, run it on the cloud. Get a Google Cloud thing or something. Can you make a tutorial top-down 3D shooter for mobile? Top-down 3D shooter. Hmm. Well, I have a 3D shooter, and I have a top-down. They're separate. Tutorials. But maybe you can combine them? <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Ray tracing or is this baked AO? I don't know what baked AO means. But I'm using line traces everywhere. Or I'm basically using like these little arrows that I've attached to my player to shoot stuff forwards. And if they hit something, then I... Like, if it hits here, I know it's a vault. If it hits here, I know it's not a vault. I can vault over, because it's too high. If it hits here, this is like to measure the distance of the wall. It's probably not the best system, but whatever. Uh, oh, oh, I accidentally exited my live stream chat. Okay. Baked ambient occlusion. Oh. Cloud can get expensive. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. 
I've never used Unreal, but it seems fancy. It does seem fancy. I have to admit, I feel very fancy when I'm using Unreal. Unity is more like, I feel very unfancy. <laughs> but then again, this is the studio, the game engine that's used by Epic Games to make their games, so... They put a lot of money into it. Um... There are no gender-neutral courtesy titles. Hmm. I feel like that's quite an oversight. But thank you for the information. Did you find the wall running animations? Yeah, um... Oh, well, I was about to... Here you go. Um... This is actually how I did most of my tutorials, most of the progress from this person. What's the difference between root animation? Root animation basically moves the character with the animation. So the animation has movement in it and it kind of blocks manual movement. Whereas a normal animation, you can move the player however you want. Um, and, you know, kind of decide where the animation location should go, if that makes sense. The issue with root motion is that it's kind of not flexible, so it's like you get it, you get what you have, and that's it. If you implement the movement by your own, you can adjust it to however you like. But root motion is pretty simple, like, if it does it for you, it's like, okay, I did it, it does it for me. Whereas the other way you have to do it manually if you want to make the player actually move while they're performing an animation. Are those arrows for detecting whether the player can slide under? Yeah, basically. Well, the slide, I always slide whatever. I'm not checking anything for the slide. I can slide in any occasion if I have the speed to slide. The arrows are checking for vaulting. So see, if it touches the bottom arrow, but it doesn't touch the middle arrow, then we can vault. However, if it touches the middle arrow, you see we can't vault. Um, here, the top one determines if we can wall run. Or maybe not, I don't know. See this one, we see that the wall is high enough so that we can wall run. Oh, that'd be cool if I can wall run from another wall like that. <laughs> so after the check for if the distance is less than the distance needed, then you can do another check to see if it's too close. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. So here I can be like, if we pressed it, but it's too close to the actual thing then don't vault over it and just like, or make them like do a messed up vault. Also I need to, yeah, see it's, right now it just vaults over and it looks weird because it goes through the. I have not tried C++ in Unreal. Well, technically I have in my previous job um, and in a tutorial, but not sustainably. But yeah, um, I'm actually gonna end the stream because I'm kind of hungry, but, um, UE and Unity, UE and Unity, which one is most used? I think Unity is the most used one. The most used game engine in indie developers. But I'm not sure. Don't quote me. Um, Unreal is used a lot by like big studios though. Although Unity is starting to get used a lot by big studios. Or they have been. I don't know the statistics. But yeah, Unity is used a lot. For wall run, you can do another arrow that's on the sides. For wall running, it worked before. Basically, it's just doing a ray cast or an arrow trace to the side of the player to see if there's a wall next to him or them or it. Uh, but <laughs> but it like messed up while I was doing all the other stuff. So I just need to fix it next time. 
Um, you and real C++ more difficult than Unity C Sharp. Yes. I have no idea what you're saying, Destroyer. Okay, cool. Um, well, if you have any questions, we have a Discord channel. Uh, link is in the description. You can join and ask any further questions there. Um, I'm going to go eat some food because I'm kind of hungry. But I hope you enjoyed the stream. And thank you so much for all the help, Raphael, and everyone else who helped. It was really useful. I feel like most of the stream is just me not knowing what to do. <laughs> but hey, we're all learning. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for coming by. I hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun. And thanks for the donation. Um, I forgot who, but thank you. So with that, I will see you next time.